Hey guys, it's Dr. V, and today I want to talk to you about a really important health topic for pets, and that is cancer. Cancer is the leading cause of death in older pets. In dogs 10 and over, cancer is responsible for as many deaths as every other cause put together. We're talking kidney disease, infections, heart disease, diabetes, you name it. The tumors have been around since prehistoric times. They can affect any multicellular organism. Cancer can affect any organ system in the body. Think of it more of a process than a specific disease because it manifests itself in many, many different ways. The cells of the body have a normal lifespan. They come into being through replication, mitosis, they live for a predetermined amount of time, and then they die. Cancer occurs when a mutated cell begins to reproduce abnormally. Think of it like a gas pedal stuck to the floor of the car. Each new cell carries a copy of that damaged DNA, which amplifies the replication process. Before you know it, you've got yourself a tumor. Some of the most common types of cancer we see in pets are lymphoma, mammary cancer, mast cell tumors, osteosarcoma, but those are just a few. We can see cancers in literally any part of the body. It's a really tricky disease to manage because there are so many different forms of cancer and they all behave differently and respond to different therapeutics, so there's no one way to treat it. As humans, we like predictable, linear chains of events. For example, if a dog or cat drinks antifreeze, we know what happens. Above a certain dosage, it causes acute renal failure, blows out the kidneys, and if left untreated, the pet dies. We have a clear cause and effect relationship. But it's not that easy with cancer. Because there are so many different types of cancer and so many different factors that can lead to it, we don't always know the cause for any given patient, and there's no one way to be sure that we can prevent it. Cancer can be caused by external factors, carcinogens such as radiation or cigarette smoke. Sometimes it's something that we really can't avoid, like the sun. And many times, it's the result of our genes themselves, a hereditary defect or a random mutation. It is devastating when a pet is diagnosed with cancer. It's very normal for people to look to answers and ask themselves, is it something I did? Is it the food I gave my cat, the vaccine I gave my dog, or that heartworm pill? The truth is, most of the time, we never really know why cancer occurs. It is impossible to completely eliminate exposure to any and all cancer-causing agents. Life causes cancer. Anyone who tells you otherwise or says that they and only they have the answer is probably trying to sell you something. At the end of the day, cancer is a disease of age. Damage to the cellular DNA is cumulative over the course of life, and the older we get, the more likely we are to hit upon that random mutation that leads to it. There is no foolproof way to prevent cancer. That doesn't mean you should give up hope. There's plenty that you can do as a pet owner to minimize the effect of cancer on your pet's life. Let's talk about preventive measures. Make sure your pet is eating the right diet for his or her age, lifestyle, and health status. Any oxidants, which scavenge free radicals, are found in many diets and supplements, as well as in fruits and veggies. Make sure your pet is at a healthy weight. Carrying extra pounds may predispose a pet to some types of cancer. And do your best to avoid known carcinogens if you can. And most importantly, get strange lumps evaluated sooner rather than later. Don't stick your head in the sand when it comes to the early warning signs of cancer. Almost a third of canine tumors are found in the skin, which is great for us because that means we can spot them early. If your pet has any strange lump that's been there more than a month, or any mass that's bigger than a pea, your veterinarian should perform a fine needle aspirate. This is an easy outpatient procedure that helps you determine if it needs to be removed right away. Even the ugliest, worst tumors start off small. If we catch them early, before they're too big to easily remove, before they've spread to the lungs or liver, many cancers, even the big nasty ones like mast cell tumors, may be completely cured. Veterinary oncology has made leaps and bounds in the last decade, and it is amazing how good we have gotten at treating these diseases. Surgery, chemo, radiation, immunotherapy, these are all options available to us, but only if we know that the cancer is there and what type it is. Lastly, let your congressperson know that you support the NIH and the work of our amazing researchers. Their body of knowledge applies to both pets and people. Thanks to them, we have advanced early detection testing, immunotherapy to train the body's own immune system to fight cancer, and highly targeted therapeutics that minimize the terrible side effects we associate with chemotherapy. 
Cancer sucks, but it doesn't have to be the end of everything. Your vet is here for you. You can find more about me and all sorts of pet health topics at pawcurious.com. Muchas, muchas to you and your pets.